my dear brothers and sisters a life is a journey isn't it we always move on from one day to another day from one project to another from one goal to a higher goal a lot of things are happening to us all the time during our journey but it will make all the difference whether the lord is with us or not in the course of our journey in the gospel of saint luke we are given the description of such a journey the journey that a disciple of jesus by name cleopas and his companion made from jerusalem to emmaus this journey has much to tell us about our own life our own daily journey with the lord let us listen to this gospel passage a reading from the gospel of saint luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 32 now that very day two of them were going to a village 7 miles from jerusalem called emmaus and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred and it happened that while they were conversing and debating jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him he asked them what are you discussing as you walk along they stopped looking downcast one of them named cleopas said to him in reply are you the only visitor to jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days and he replied to them what sort of things they said to him the things that happened to jesus the nazarene who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before god and all the people how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him but we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem israel and besides all this it is now the third day since this took place some women from our group however have astounded us they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body they came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described but him they did not see and jesus said to them how foolish you are how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke was it not necessary that the messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory then beginning with moses and all the prophets he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures as they approached the village to which they were going he gave the impression that he was going on further but they urged him stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over so he went in to stay with them 
that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. My dear friends, Cleopas and his companion, after the death of Jesus, they were going back from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Emmaus was their native village. Some three years ago, they had come from Emmaus to Jerusalem, perhaps for a festival in the temple. And that's where they would have met Jesus. And they were impressed by the teachings of the Lord, by the attractive personality of Jesus. And they decided to follow Jesus. For three years, they were with Jesus, listening to him, walking with him, staying with him all the time. But then, unfortunately, they thought everything was over. Jesus was arrested, handed over to the Romans, condemned and crucified. And the two of them, they were talking about it on the way. They were very sad. And St. Luke tells us they were very sad. They were angry and bitter. Angry at everyone who did it to Jesus. They were anxious about their own future. Very frustrated. Well, that is what they felt when they were traveling alone, just the two of them. All negative emotions and attitudes, frustration, sadness, bitterness, anger, fear and despair. But the whole scenario changes the moment Jesus joined them and they began to walk with Jesus. And Jesus asked them, what are you talking about? Or rather, it tells us what Jesus wants of them. Jesus wanted them to share everything with him. Jesus was inviting them what they were talking about to share their feelings and their emotions with him. And they began to talk. In this journey with Jesus, there are three characteristics that would strike us. First, the invitation of Jesus to share everything with him. In other words, prayer. That is what prayer is. Whatever there is in my heart, in my life, I share with Jesus. Whatever happens to me, whatever I'm happy about, whatever I'm sad about, I share with Jesus. In our journey with the Lord, prayer must become a very prominent 
factor in our life. We must find time to spend with the Lord in prayer. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, there is a wonderful event. Chapter 10 verses 38 onwards. Let me read this for you. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. One thing indeed is needful, and Mary has chosen the better portion which shall not be taken away from her. My dear friends, Martha and Mary, the two sisters of Lazarus, when Jesus was preaching in the temple of Jerusalem, in the evening he would retire to Bethany, a little village not far away from Jerusalem. And Jesus took his night rest in the house of Lazarus. And this happened at one such time. Jesus and the disciples were in the house. Martha, like a good housewife, was running about, doing a lot of things. There was much to do in the house. But Mary was quietly sitting at the feet of Jesus, talking to him and listening to him. And Martha thought that Mary was wasting the time sitting there doing nothing. And Martha pleaded with Jesus, Master, look at that girl sitting there doing nothing. Ask her to get up and come and do something useful. And that's when Jesus said, Martha, you are troubled. You're anxious about many things. In fact, only one thing is necessary. Only one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the better part. And therefore, was Martha doing something unnecessary? Something not needful? No, not really. Martha was a responsible housewife. When Jesus and the disciples were at home, there was much to do. Cutting and cleaning and washing and cooking, what not. And Martha was meant to be busy with all those necessary things. But then, while doing the necessary things, Martha had unnecessary emotions in her heart. As the Bible tells us, Martha was troubled. Martha was tense. Martha was anxious. Martha was judgmental. And Jesus said, Martha, come and sit here for a moment. Let me talk to you. Listen to me. An invitation to be with Jesus. But my friends, an invitation Jesus is giving us every day, all the time, come to me, abide in me. What Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 1 onwards, 
abide in me. I will abide in you. Being close to Jesus. Remaining in the presence of Jesus. Opening our hearts to him. Sharing with him everything that is good and bad. Happy and unhappy in our lives. And this is what prayer is. And we must find time for prayer every day. Personal prayer. Being with Jesus. Sharing our life with him. In the gospel of Mark chapter 6 verse 31. Jesus invited the disciples. Come. Let's go and rest a while. That's exactly what prayer is. Going with Jesus. Remaining with him. And opening our hearts to him. And we know. When we open our hearts to the Lord. We are bound. To receive. The affection. The love. And the peace of Jesus. To flow into our hearts. And this is what. Prayer is sharing our life with the Lord. And that's exactly what the two disciples did. Cleopas and his companion. They were sad. And all their sadness they shared with Jesus. They were angry and bitter. They shared all that anger and bitterness with Jesus. And that's when Jesus began to talk to them. The gospel tells us, Jesus opened the word, interpreted the word to them, to make them understand what happened to them. And that is the second characteristic of our journey with Jesus. In our journey with the Lord, there could be many things that we do not understand that escape our comprehension. When we share it all with Jesus, he will talk to us. He will explain things to us. And we will be able to understand everything in the light of God's word. And we must find time to read the word of God. Read the word of God as being explained to us by the church. Jesus is inviting us to listen to him. And we need to bring the attitude of prophet Samuel. Samuel prayed, speak Lord, your servant is listening. After sharing our problems, our troubles, our temptations, our sins with Jesus. We need to wait. Wait upon him. To listen to him. Open the word of God. The Bible. The Bible is the word of God. Often people imagine that the Bible is a book. Yes, it is a book. But the challenge is to rise above the book and make it a word of God. What we read in the Bible are letters, verses, chapters written. But these written sentences are really the word of God. What God is talking to me now, today, at this moment. And that's why St. Augustine tells us that the Bible is the love letter. The love letter that God has written to us. Written to me. A love letter is always a personal message. When I get a letter from my dad from my mom, from my friend, from my husband, from my wife. I know there is 
a personal message meant for me someone who loves me someone who cares for me is writing to me giving me a message of love to comfort to console to instruct to correct perhaps anyway it's a message to make me grow up and that message is a message of love and same way the bible is a personal message of love that god is giving me and therefore before i open the bible i need to pray to the holy spirit the holy spirit is the real author of the bible and when i read the bible it is the holy spirit who speaks to me the word in the bible becomes a voice of god god's voice speaking to me and i listen to what god is telling me i could be sad to my sadness god has a word to tell me a word of comfort i could be tempted in the moment of my temptation i have a word a word to strengthen me maybe i'm feeling guilty about a sin that i committed and i'm waiting for a for a word from god and god will give me a word of forgiveness a word of freedom and pardon setting me free from that guilt burning into my heart i must wait upon god to hear god speaking to me i'm sure all of you had this experience when you were reading the bible you felt certain verses standing out in a bright light and when that happens we need to dwell on that verse on that word and wait for all the insight all the love all the light to flow into us it's a message a personal message of love that god is giving me and this must become a daily experience as we find time to talk to jesus to share our problems with him to find comfort in him we also need to set apart time to read the bible and when we read the bible we must wait upon god to listen to god speaking to us when the disciples were listening to god's word to what jesus talked to them they were saying did not our hearts burn within us when we heard god's word a burning sensation a great thrill in our hearts that god has spoken to me i have heard god's word flowing into my heart and now this experience will lead us to the third characteristic of our journey with the lord jesus went with them to the house and in the house they had the breaking of the bread we are told when he was at table with them he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them in the early church the holy mass was known as the breaking of the bread jesus broke the bread with them a sacramental experience an experience that filled them with great joy of course when they listened to jesus speaking to them their hearts were burning within them but that burning sensation became the fullness of joy when they had 
the sacramental experience the experience of the holy sacrament of the holy eucharist you know uh, our protestant brethren they believe in the word of god but unfortunately they do not believe in the sacraments but we know the sacraments are the signs signs of what signs of god's presence of god's activity it is through the seven sacraments that god acts upon our lives and since they are sacred signs that contain the grace of god we are sure god is there god is present god is acting god is working on us we know the first sacrament that we receive is the sacrament of um baptism in baptism we are incorporated into christ and that is a real happening when the priest pours the water and says the prayers what really happens is an incorporation into christ we become the members of the body of jesus christ jesus is the head and we are the members of the body of jesus st paul in the letter to romans beautifully explains what is the sacrament of baptism is romans chapter 6 the whole chapter speaks about the grace of baptism paul says um in chapter 6 verse 5 we are united with the lord jesus in the in the sacrament of baptism now this word united with jesus it comes often in this chapter well when we hear it in english it does not mean much united but the original greek is beautiful and very meaningful the word the greek word is symphitos well um it's greek but then you understand the word fetus that's exactly what paul means as the fetus is united with the mother so a baptized person is united with jesus and what happens to the fetus in the womb of the mother the fetus is so united so connected with the mother everything from the mother flows into the fetus the mother feeds the fetus there is an automatic natural connection and union with the mother and the fetus when the mother thrives the fetus also thrives today psychologists are telling us even the emotions of the mother flow into the fetus in the womb of the mother 